While the reigning champions are still threats to win it all, LeBron and AD missing a combined 63 games this season has made people question LA's chances at a repeat. So what's going on with the Lakers? Can they get past the top seeds in the West? And will they be in the play-in tournament? The mainstream sports media aren't giving the Lakers much of a chance to capture their second straight world championship. How far can LeBron and Anthony Davis take the Lakers? I'm scared right now. I'm scared for the Los Angeles Lakers. I want to put the basketball world on official notice. I don't even know if the Lakers are getting past the play-in game. What? I don't even know the if the Lakers are playing the play-in game. Wow. They don't look good. How much trouble are the Lakers in? Are your Lakers in? They're in real trouble. It's, it's, and it's very, very concerning. Really? Um, You're yeah. all the way to real yeah, trouble? Yeah, they're real trouble, Skip. This is not going to get a lot better. He's going to have to play with discomfort in the postseason. It's not going to be till the summer, but the question still remains of how effective LeBron James can be. And as blasphemous as those takes seem for Laker fans, they've been for good reason because this team has faced massive turmoil in 2021. But it's amazing how quickly people forget that when fully healthy, the Lakers have the most dominant pick and roll tandem in basketball in two top five players with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. However, right now, AD's suffering a new injury seemingly every game as the brow hasn't looked like the top five player he proved himself to be in the 2020 playoffs. But even though he just missed over 30 straight games due to a right calf and heel issue, his motivation is where it would be had he played in every single game this year. Near the end of April, he responded to the doubters who were counting out LA by saying, no matter where we fall, we know we're still capable of winning a championship. Injuries played a part for us this season. We always say it just makes it a lot sweeter at the end to go through something like this. Put us up against anyone, I don't think anyone wants to see us in the first round. I know the type of team that we have, and I know what we can do. I think we're capable of beating anyone in a seven-game series. After Davis re-injured his right ankle, apparently his teammate Alex Caruso saw some fans roasting him on Twitter, and here's what the Bald Mamba had to say about that after the Lakers took down the Suns recently and AD went off. I, I can't speak for him personally, but I know I've heard a lot of chit uh, chit chat, you know, some tweets, some, some words around the, the world about AD is so soft and he's falling all over the place. And guys got to understand they just got to give him a couple days to get, you know, a couple games, get his feet under him. And I mean, they're, they're, the beast is, is waking up, as everybody can tell. The Carew Show makes some valid points. AD's certainly rounding into form as in his last two games, he's averaged 39 points to go along with 12 boards, five dimes, and two blocks. That production is just massive for LA because when he finds his flow, Anthony Davis is the best two-way power forward in all of basketball. But before breaking down LeBron's injuries and deciding if Lake Show fans should expect a repeat despite their struggles, we have to quickly look at one of the most embarrassing nights for the franchise in recent memory. The Lakers were never in the game against their LA counterpart and division rival Clippers as they were blown out of the water, losing 118 to 94 with their offense continuing to falter. Kyle Kuzma and Montrez Harrell were the only Lakers to score in double digits, and they only shot 13 for 28 from the field combined. Overall, the team finished 33 for 87 from the floor and 10 for 36 from distance, and to top off the miserable night, LA was already missing LeBron, and then received a major scare when Anthony Davis stumbled near the scorer's table in the first quarter, and after holding on to his previously injured right ankle, he left the game and wouldn't return. As good as we know the brow is, there's no denying the man's extremely injury prone, and if the Lakers can't rely on the health of their 1A scoring option, then that could open up the door for the other West contenders. And teams like the Jazz, teams like the Suns and Clippers, even the Denver Nuggets who are missing Jamal Murray but are still damn dangerous, these teams are no joke. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But moving on to the infamous LeBron James who had this to say about the play-in tournament. So whoever came up with that shit, uh, need to be fired, um, but whatever. And what do you know, a few days after Braun called for the firing of him, the executive vice president of basketball strategy and analytics, Evan Wash, the man who created the play-in format, responded to King James saying, Obviously, we welcome feedback from our players and teams, but on balance, 
we believe the play-in tournament offers more benefits than downsides. Evan's got a solid point, and LBJ does seem to be a tad salty about the Lakers sliding down to the number 7 seed, no matter if the Lakers are the number 6 seed or if they hold their current position in the play-in, their first round matchup's going to be incredibly tough. Let's say the Lakers get past Steph Curry and the Warriors in the play-in, then they're going to look at a matchup with CP3, Booker, and a powerhouse Suns team in the first round. In the case where the Lakers gain spots on the Mavs and Blazers, who they're only a game back of, they're only a half game back of the Blazers now, let's say they move up to the number 5 seed, they're still looking at a matchup where they don't have home court advantage against the Clippers or Nuggets. The intensity, rhythm, and continuity it takes to beat those teams doesn't just come out of thin air. LA has a 12-15 record without LeBron James, and he said himself that he'll never get back to 100% from this injury. But the good news for Laker fans is he was a full participant in practice on Monday and reportedly felt no pain in his ankle over the past few days. Following a 20-game absence, James returned to the court on April 30th, but after playing in two games, the second of which he exited early, he went back on the injury list as he was dealing with soreness in the same ankle that caused him to miss significant time. The Lakers have been extra cautious with James's injury as they'll want him at full strength when the playoffs start next week. Despite three straight wins over the Suns, Knicks, and Rockets, the Lakers haven't had both of their superstars in the lineup over a long stretch of games in a very long time. To win a title, developing a championship winning rhythm in the regular season is crucial and LA hasn't done that, so they'll have to overcome the odds this postseason in order to repeat. Luckily, the bald mamba, the goat, the Caruso, whatever you want to call him, he's been there to save the day, because in 18 games since April started, Alex Caruso's shooting an above average 70% in the paint, and he's making 45% of his threes. Alex isn't quite an all-defensive team player, but he's extremely solid on both ends of the floor. His vocal leadership is also damn valuable. The newly acquired big penguin Andre Drummond was struggling this month, but he seems to be finding his form in Laker threads over the last two games. Maybe it's a little too soon to say that, but unfortunately, Andre hasn't had the chance to benefit off playing next to the best duo in basketball in AD and Braun because of their injuries, of course but I still think Drummond will play a huge part in the playoffs for the Lake Show. Then there's how Kyle Kuzma stepped up his production this year, as the fourth year man from Utah has significantly improved his shot creation ability. Kuz is one of LA's main X factors, as he's a lethal stretch four when he gets it going. THT, Talon Horton, Tucker's someone LeBron loves playing next to. He's another underrated producer in LA's system. Dennis Schroeder's been out since April 30th under COVID protocol. He plays 32 minutes per game, tied with Anthony Davis for second most on the team. Schroeder's also started in 59 games for the Lakers this year. He gives them another elite pick and roll ball handler next to Braun. Finally, the former Clipper Montrez Harrell has been an absolute force in the paint. When rolling to the rim, there's one strength in particular that stands out for him and that's his incredible ability to catch the ball regardless of how well-placed the pass is. As Coach Frank Vogel puts it, he catches everything and he finishes everything. He's got a tremendous wingspan and he's got great hands. Well said. But don't forget, other than new pieces like Drummond, Harrell, and Schroeder, this is practically the same roster that won a championship last year. So no top seed wants to see the Lake Show in the first round. Mentally, that can get in your head, like we worked all year for the number one seed or number two seed, but we have to face the Lakers, are you kidding me? And LeBron James isn't only one of the most physically dominant players in the game, but what makes the four-time finals MVP the best player on earth is how he controls the game using his basketball IQ. The extra playmaking of Schroeder has allowed James to sit on the wing and call for another player to run offensive sets in the pick and roll while he spaces the floor. There's no doubt in my mind that with King James in rhythm, once he returns from his second stint of missing a big chunk of games, that the Lakers could make another run at a championship.
LeBron did say he would never return to 100% after his ankle, and I don't want to say he's bluffing when he says that because the man's turning 37 this year, but I think he could be playing mind games and letting the other West contenders gain a false sense of hope. And while the top teams in the West this year will provide a formidable challenge, I actually think it would be the worst case scenario if the Lakers ran into the deep Utah Jazz, that'd probably be the worst matchup for them. But other than Utah, I don't see a team that the Lake Show couldn't take down in a best of seven series. They could even take down Utah. That's going to be really tough to beat that team four times, though. I have a lot of respect for the Jazz. But LeBron and AD is still by far the best duo in the league at full strength. And as we know, star power means everything in the postseason. So are the Lakers still top threats to win it all in 2021? Best answer in the comments gets next video shout out. This was D-Flow, you're the best for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.